All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at Profusion virtual event this year. I'm you know, a little bummed out that I can't see you guys in person and present uh, to you live in person, but this will have to do. Um, very excited to be at the Sony booth. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about wedding photography and photographing with the Sony Alpha system. So I've, I've been uh, using Sony since 2018 and really been enjoying uh, the system and the offerings in terms of lenses and equipment that's available. And actually lately, uh, I've had a chance to be playing with uh, this really, really cool camera. I don't know if you guys had a chance to play with uh, the Alpha one yet. Let me know if you have. Uh, this is one of my favorite combos, the 50 1.2 GM lens and the Alpha one. This combination has been quite a pleasure to, to, to photograph with, just the resolution of the camera, how speedy everything is, and the extremely crazy fast accurate autofocusing of this lens, along with, of course, the 1.2 bokeh, it's been a dream. So uh, if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, um, I suggest that you do, it's just my name, at Raph uh, And I'll be posting a lot more images with this combination over the next few months. So hope to connect with you there and on social media. So without further ado, let's get into the uh, presentation. And let me just load that up for you guys right here. Uh, there we go, of course, live events. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Okay, awesome. Okay, let me just play this guy right here. Perfect, so this should, this should be it. Okay, so creative wedding photography, creating wedding, creative wedding portraits with, with Sony Alpha. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how, um, as someone has converted from you know, a different system, I've been using a different system for about 10 years or so, um, and then decided to switch to Sony, I've been able to really create really cool images for my clients, something that maybe they're not expecting, such as this image here. I've been able to really get in on the action, um, giving them a different perspective, um, showing them, you know, the craziness of the party from, from you know, different angles um, and so on. Also, I've been able to, you know, take something ordinary and, and turn it into something a bit more magical, a bit more moody. Uh, that's kind of more, more, more of my style, um, but I've been able to create, you know, images in a boring hotel room that look a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more interesting. And of course, the ability to capture emotion as it happens on the wedding day has been really, really cool. Uh, again, as a wedding photographer, I feel a part of their day. And again, tying this all back to the Sony system, I've really been able to, to capture everything I needed to uh, capture over the years now uh, with uh, using Sony. So some of the key differences from the competition that I noticed right away when I switched over, and, and these are the following, the extreme accurate autofocus. And what was really crazy was a friend of mine had a Sony camera and I was using a different system at the time. And we met at a pub and he's like, well, here, try my Sony and I'm going to go walk over there and you hold down this button and I'm going to keep walking towards you. And and you just keep taking pictures and I bet you all of them are gonna be tack sharp. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I swear every single one of those images was tack sharp and I was blown away how crazy the eye autofocus, eye tracking have, has been. And it, it was such a game changer for me. Uh, so so that, was, that was just crazy to see in, in, real, in real life. If you're not a Sony shooter, you're going to really um, see how amazing that system is. So the second thing I noticed right away was insane detail. Even, even on a workhorse camera like my, you know, a7 III, the detail coming out of, you know, maybe a 55 millimeter size lens, it almost looks like medium format, almost looks like I'm using macro lenses. The amount of detail is just, just mind boggling and, and it's just insane. And I actually heard someone say once, it's too sharp, which is really, really funny to me, but, um, the detail was just just simply incredible. And so, and as a professional, of course, the, the last thing here 
is reliability. Now, knock on wood, I haven't had you know any issues yet over the years uh, with any of my Sony stuff. Uh, Sony Pro support has been amazing as well. Uh, they really make you feel part of the family. If you're a Sony shooter now and uh, you know you're not a Pro support member, I definitely suggest you uh, look into that and, and see how you're uh, you know able to join. Um, you get you know lens cleanings, you get camera cleanings, you have um, you know different different perks. Um, ability to to get some loan equipment as well. So they really look after you, um, and, and it's you know the reliability so far again has been has been awesome. So uh, aside from all the other things, obviously these are just the three main ones that I've noticed right away when I switched over uh, to Sony. And of course, as we get new cameras, there's obviously new features, newer technology, and so on. So I'm not going to name everything, <laughs> but these are the main the main main ones that I've noticed. I've had, I had a chance to also play with the A7R4. And, and it's, it's quite different than my A7 III because it has this amazing, amazing ability to track um, the eye, even when the, the, the bride is spinning and there's hair in her face and it's still tracking that eyeball through all that moving hair. So you can see it's sort of a 100% crop here on the right-hand side, shot with one of my favorite lenses, the 135, 1.8 G Master. Just, just mind-boggling how amazing the tracking is and how sharp everything is, despite all the movement and everything that happens um, in, in the in the scene. Again, as we're, we're running through the road with our sneakers and our, and our bridal dress, uh, the tracking and, and the movement, everything is captured exactly how uh, I want. So um, it's been really, really cool to try the A7R4. And again, that's a camera I ended up investing in because it has 60 megapixels, it's quite, a lot of megapixels and this is the type of camera that I mostly use for um, commercial work. Uh, so not a lot for weddings because it does take up quite a bit of space, uh, but for commercial work uh, it certainly has come in, in handy. So just in case you not no clue who I am, uh, my name is Raf Nogal and I've been a wedding photographer for the last uh, dozen years and counting. Uh, crazy how time flies. Uh, so I've been a professional for 12 years uh, and counting, uh, won a couple of awards here and there, WPPI and Fearless. I love participating in those uh, types of competitions as well, just to keep me fresh, so to speak. And uh, I concentrate mostly on weddings and portraits. And of course, over the years, I've done headshots, events, and, and uh, products, and especially now back with COVID, um, starting to do a lot more product photography and a lot more headshots. I think a lot of people are putting up Shopify websites, selling things online. And I think a lot of people are switching careers these days as well. So that new LinkedIn photo uh, needs to be nice and fresh. And so uh, I've been quite busy with that along with, uh, again, the wedding work. If you need to find my work, it's just rafnogal.com. It's just my first and last name. Same with my Instagram at rafnogal. And I have a YouTube channel, which I'd love for you to check out and subscribe to. Give me a couple of thumbs here and there. Uh, rafnogal Photography, you should be able to find me there. Uh, and hope to hope to see you there. So let's talk about wedding photography and the Sony Alpha system. Again, we'll, we'll talk about gear a little bit because I think you know to me there are some essential gear that you need as a um, wedding photographer. And this is just my opinion, of course. But first of all, you need two camera bodies. I I would hate for someone to show up with a wedding to to do a wedding and, and only photograph with one camera. You know, despite the amazing reliability. You never know what would happen. Um, what if you drop the camera? What if you fall in a pool? What if something, you know? So I would always say you need two cameras. And I think the easiest way to do that is to have two identical cameras set up exactly the same way. So there's no fiddling around, right? Now is a great time to get into the Sony system too because they've just announced the A7 IV. And so I think that's gonna be one of the best wedding centric cameras or, or cameras, uh, you know, applicable to wedding photography. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you're, you're kind of on the fence or, or thinking of jumping on the Sony system, that's one camera that would certainly look at uh, a lot closely, a lot more closely. In terms of lenses, I mean, you know, uh, there are sort of two, two, two schools here. One is, you know, the Holy Trinity, the 12, 24, zoom, 24 to 70 zoom, and 7200. That gives you a huge range from 12 to 200. And you have that 2.8 fast glass all the way around in any focal length. So I think it's a really good way to start. You have three lenses at the end of the day, and you have an extremely crazy range from 12 to 200. 
Now, if you're more into primes, of course, there's a 24, 35, 50, 85, 135. Those are all great. That's five lenses right there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, yes. Uh, you know, if you are thinking maybe starting with two, I'd say 35, 85 is probably you can, you can get, get away with uh, in a lot of scenarios. So that's, um, that's one option that, that could potentially work. Uh, of course, I have both of these scenarios. I've, uh, I bring a whole bunch of gear uh, with me to weddings. I have a roll bag that I, uh, that I have. And so I typically bring this stuff here. I currently shoot with the eight, seven threes, soon to be the four, of course. And of course I have a 16 to 35, 24, 70, 72, 200. And that gives me a really great range for any kind of zoom uh, lenses that, you know, um, from 16 to 200, so it's a really good, good range there. And I have the 24, 35, 55, 85, and 135. And again, there's a time and place for those. So I utilize them when, uh, when I can. Okay, so that's pretty much what I bring to my weddings. Not, not talking about lighting gear and other things like that, but in terms of Sony specific gear, this is what I bring personally to, to a wedding. Now, as you guys know, weddings are fast paced. They can be, certainly. So when a situation like this arises with this photograph here, where a couple is literally running out of the church, trying not to get rice in their eyeballs, we need to be there, we need to be ready, we need to be able to track them, and we need to be able to deliver to our clients. So this is one a, a really fun image. You can see the they're just trying to <laughs> completely cover themselves up, but you can see all the rice, everything. This is shot at one two fiftieth. Uh, of a second here and we're able to capture a lot of that really cool movement but again a lot of sharp things images here uh, sharp um, parts of the image here as well but this was with a 24 to 70. sometimes 24 is just the right lens when a bride leans over and chomps on a, a massive grilled cheese sandwich you need to be there you need to be ready you need to be in tune with what's happening, right? The unpredictable moments. Um, and so this was shot at um, 1.4 um, at one one thousandth of a second with a 24 millimeter GM lens. So that was really, really fun. And it's one of, <laughs> it's a really fun image to, to take as well. This is just eating lunch in the middle of getting ready, <laughs> which is quite funny. And of course there's these quiet moments, right? Where, you know, we need to, um, I just kind of sneak up on people and so on. This is a dad and, and a little guy who's partied out, I guess, uh, in the middle of, of reception here. Um, so we shot this at 1.4 uh, with the 24 again. And, um, you know, just the right lens for that, um, uh, for that scenario. And of course, in this situation, we also use the silent shutter, which is one of the really, really cool features of the uh, Sony system, where, you know, especially with working with videographers, we're able to, you know, if they're trying to record audio as we're photographing, uh, this is a really great feature to, to be uh, in tune with, with the entire production, not just the photography part. So again, those photos created by the amazing tracking ability as that couple's running forward, covering their eyes, rice is flying everywhere, fast autofocus, right? So when a bride turns up with a sandwich, jump, I'm able to track really quickly, get that focus, get it in and in the frame and uh, and nice and tack sharp. And of course the silent mode as we just talked about. So as you guys know, the wedding day has many scenarios, right? There's the first look, there's uh, there's a getting ready, right? The first look sometimes, uh, creative portrait time, ceremonies, reception and party and so on. So we need to be in tune with that. I wanna show you some behind the scenes here of um, how we utilized the, uh, the Sony system here in creating some really interesting images for our clients. So this is during getting ready. What I'm saying really isn't important in this case. So I'll just kind of talk over myself here. But what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm walking into a room with a 24 to 70. Uh, that's my main lens that I actually um, walk into any room with because I don't know whether the room is big or small. And at 24, I can get nice and wide. And at 70, of course, I can go a little bit closer. So it's a really great lens to kind of walk into any situation where you'll be able to not you know, you'll be able to, able to deliver and not get caught off guard. So here, what we're able to do is uh, she's getting her makeup done. And I saw this little uh, round um, ring light and I thought it'd be really cool to, um, uh, to really 
just focus on the ring light and how um, that brush is, is touching the lips of the bride here. And so created, created something like this. This is shot at one two thousandth of a second because that light is super, super bright. So everything naturally around it that I'm not um, uh, focusing on or exposing for is gonna go to dark. And I thought a nice black and white image here would be really, really cool. So here's another scenario where we're, we're getting ready. Uh, we've asked the makeup artist just to kind of hang tight for a second. And we're using off camera flash in this case, but what I'm doing is I'm actually outside of this room on the balcony or, or, or on the outside. And there's a glass here uh, in front of me. So I'm photographing into the glass, reflecting the backyard and the, the shed and some of the trees and also lighting her separately and able to focus on, um, on her with that 24 to 70. Again, it's giving me the ability to, you know, how much of the scene do I want? I don't have a lot of room to move in that backyard. So I'm so it, it literally in one spot, zooming in and out and, and, and being able to adjust my frame uh, as I take the shot. This was another really fun one with the 24 to 70, a bride uh, brought out her pet snake, which I thought was quite fun. And uh, one one thousandth of a second, and we shot it with, uh, you know, with a little bit of a faster frame rate here. And we're able to try to capture the tongues <laughs> in sync, so to speak. So as you can see her tongue, I asked her to stick her tongue out and kind of hold it there. And I waited till the snake kind of gave me that little hiss. <laughs> And I thought this was a really fun, uh, fun image to, to photograph. And uh, this ended up, I think, winning a, a fearless award uh, one year, which was, uh, which was really cool. So wedding mornings, again, I typically shoot with a 24 to 70 or the 35 if I have to, you know, uh, not that I'm forced to, to uh, photograph with a prime, but if you are shooting with primes only, let's say, or, or primes are your thing, a 35, I think is a really good, good prime to, um, to kind of get into any situation where you're, you're able to get enough of the wide, but also zoom in and walk up to the person uh, or to the, to the subject that you're photographing and still get uh, something decent. So uh, I would recommend either of those two as you're walking in into that morning part where people are just getting ready and getting set up. So now we're looking at the first look, for example. This was shot uh, with the 135, 1.8 GM. And I love this, it's shot at 2.2. So not wide open, but just a little bit um, where we have really cool rendition of the background, um, really cool, like what's happening to, to the plants there as well uh, on the side. And so this was really cool because again, I'm tracking her as she's walking towards him. Uh, I'm basically, I, the eye out of focus is just doing all the hard, hard work for me. And I'm simply just allowing her to walk up to him, tap him on the back, and you know, I shoot away, right? So 135, great lens. If you have the space, certainly use that. Um, it, it's, it's one of my favorites and it's, it's an extremely, extremely sharp lens. This was 7200, 2.8. So this was really fun because this was the first look where in the prank that uh, the groom's brother pulled, he got into a separate wedding dress, not the bride's, but a different wedding dress. And the groom of course thought it was the bride coming up to him but it was indeed his brother in a wedding dress. So his reaction's awesome. We got tons of chins going on. We got such an amazing expression. And that was so much fun to photograph. Everyone was just filming themselves laughing. Uh, and this ended up being picked up by some UK newspaper or something. It was, it was quite, quite funny. And, and they were really, <laughs> really happy that it happened on their wedding day. So uh, 7200 was the perfect choice for this. Uh, I didn't have a lot of space, so I didn't know whether I needed to be closer to that 70 range or that 200 range. And so I had the flexibility and, you know, this lens really allows you to get in there, still get the background nice and, and separate the subject, uh, render the background nicely with nice bokeh in the back at 2.8 here. Um, it just accomplishes everything I needed to do. So this was with an E5. We had a limited space here, so I knew that uh, I didn't really need a zoom. I uh, opted for an 85 here to um, just capture his emotion again as he turns around and we're photographing at Brian's back. Uh, one, uh, one over uh, 1,250th of a second, wide open at 1.8. Um, again, that's a, just a beautiful moment. 
just the right type of lens. Um, the background blurs out really nice here. This is the 1.8 uh, version. And so, yeah, again, it just does, does what I need. Uh, and here, another 7200. This looks like it was shot at uh, probably the 200 range because that uh, background is quite, quite blurry and, and he just pops right out of the frame, which is really, really cool. Um, really bright day, one six thousandth of a second. So we're, you know, we're in the sun here. Again, 7200 does, does the job um, in exactly, uh, exactly what we needed uh, for the situation. Again, sometimes, you know, I'll pick the 7200 because I don't know where they're going to be. I don't know what, what movements are going to happen. I have a, a pretty good idea, but but this lens really allows me to, to have that flexibility. So for first looks and reveals, I definitely recommend 7200. I think it's um, you know one of the best choices here because you're able to really uh, get in on the action at that 200 uh, millimeter range, but you also have the flexibility that if things move, if you wanna get full length or three quarter and then zoom in on the faces, you can do that instantaneously by, just by zooming the ring. And of course, there's a Mark II out now, which has been awesome. I've had a chance to play with it on uh, for a couple of days. It's, it's definitely lighter, which is very, very noticeable uh, in, in your hands. And again, extremely fast, uh, just, a, just a pleasure to photograph it. So check that one out as well if you, if you haven't. Um, so that or the 135, I think, again, if you have the space, sometimes the 85 will, will, will do the trick as well. But those are the, the, the lenses I would probably uh, choose for those types of situations. So here we are, this is creative portraits. What we're doing is um, we have a couple, uh, quite a distance away from me here, we're lighting them up here with a, with a flash, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to get some separation from them and, and include them in a small little um, window between all these trees. And so you can't even see me over there. Uh, but I'm ultimately what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a little hole within all the leaves uh, to, to really focus uh, your attention to them. So we ended up with something like this. And again, with that 1.8 lens, that 135 millimeter lens here, and we're at 5.6. So I wanted a little bit of, of shapes and so on in my foreground um, and have them separated uh, in the background there. And I think it, it, uh, we succeeded in creating that really cool Cool shot for them. So here we are um, at a wedding. It's the wedding party. Um, again, I, when it comes to group shots uh, and wedding party shots, I try to use a 7200 when I can. Again, it gives me that flexibility. But at the same time, um, I really like to separate. I don't want to, I don't know if I'm talking over them or not, but okay, we're done here. So that's good. So I, I don't know, uh, so, so I really like separating the background from the subjects. Again, shooting this at 2.8 will certainly allow me to do that. They're in a straight line. So shooting this portrait at 2.8, I don't really have any issues with someone being out of focus because they're, they're basically all on the same line, right? So that, that focal plane remains consistent all the way throughout. And again, it's just a simple shot, but again, it separates them a little bit from the background which um, again, we're able to, to accomplish with the 2.8 uh, aperture here. So here we are at a, the Thompson Hotel, I believe downtown Toronto, and they're just getting ready. Just, just a really cool backdrop. I thought it would be really fun to have them just look at each other as they're doing their cuffling and their jackets. So that was, uh, that was really, really cool. Uh, we're using the natural light here. And we're shooting with a 24 to 70 here, because again, I'm, I'm able to, to really choose my um, frame here. And uh, the uh, blurry effect there was, was added in later in, uh, in Photoshop, um, but um, we shot this at F5 just to get the background in focus and them in focus as well, and really cool expression. So 24 to 70 in that case. So here we are doing more creative portraits. We are now using the 14 to 24 F4 lens in this case. So what I really wanted to do is, is create this really, really cool illusion of, of them being smaller in the frame and everything else around them quite big, and especially that veil. So you can kind of see how we're pulling the veil closer to the camera. 
and you can kind of see how we've accomplished that. We, we pulled the, the veil right up to the camera, up to the lens here, and to create that, that really cool effect. So uh, shot at um, probably about 14 millimeters here. Um, this is 12 to 24. I think I said 14 before, but it's 12. Um, at 7.1 and to one uh, over 250 for the second. And of course, we use off camera flash here as well. But so you, you can kind of get a sense of kind of what we're doing with, with these lenses, right? Like you can see how the reason why I bring so many lenses with me is because I never know what situation I'm going to be in. Um, if I shoot with two lenses, let's say 35, 85, yeah, it's a lot less gear to carry, but at the end of the day, I'm sacrificing perhaps some really cool images um, because I just don't have the right equipment with me. So I bring a lot with me. Uh, again, this was a quick image here that we did, and uh, they're in this atrium of this hotel, and I ended up going up all the way up to the, the second story there, or third maybe, and shooting down at them with the 7200 again, such a versatile lens and um, do a really cool kind of shot, um, bird's eye view, so to speak, uh, of them right in here. Again, if I, sh if I only had the E5, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'd be able to do it, but, um, uh, but again, having the flexibility, again, you're, you're short on time, right? Uh, during wedding days. So um, having the right gear definitely, definitely helps. So for creative portraits, I think, you know, variety is key. Having, you know, more than that, that, that two lens combination, um, your angles, you know, things like that, um, variety is, is really, really important. But one of my, you know, two of my favorite lenses for, for portraits, 135, if I have the space, if I'm outside, I would love to, you know, all day long with the 135, it's such an amazing lens. It, it, such, it has such a unique look uh, to the images. It's extremely tack sharp. And my new favorite is this fairly new lens here, the 50 1.2. And a 50 is such a standard lens, right? If you guys remember back in the, the film days, any 35 uh, millimeter film camera came with, you know, a, a, a 50, usually 1.8 kit lens. Uh, so this is 1.2, a lot more light gets in there. Extremely beautiful bokeh. And again, extremely, extremely fast. Uh, so loving that lens right now. Um, and then we get into, you know, receptions and party. And, um, you know, I really like to get in there, um, uh, into the action. So lens like the 12 to 24 in this case, lenses like the 24 millimeter will often use during dancing and, and that kind of atmospheric, uh, I guess they're portraits because they're of people, but it's more of, 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 um, of those scenes of, of the party and the dancing and the, and the craziness. And so, so we definitely like to get in there and I would encourage you to, to, to get a lens that will allow you to really get in, into people's faces a little bit um, as they're, they're having a good time, uh, probably a few drinks in as well. So while we do that for dancing, we also do the opposite, right? Where we, um, kind of have a vantage point that allows us to stay a bit further back. So for example, if it's if it's um, first dance, we're probably not gonna be in their face too much. If it's like party dancing, we probably will. But what's really cool is that, look how I'm able to track these guys and get such a crazy sharp image with this crazy smoke coming up and it literally engulfs them. <laughs> if you look at his face, he's just like, what is happening with the smoke? But again, the system allows me to just lock in and hang tight with that focus and follow them along no matter what's happening. And, and this was such a game changer for me when, you know, coming from a system that didn't allow me to, you know, I, I'd have, you know, three out of 10 in sharp, in focus images in a, in a dark scenario, you know, on a dance reception, you know, which, which was not great. Uh, and that skyrocketed to eight, nine, 10 out of 10 for most of my shots uh, with, that, with that Sony system since I switched. So again, talking about going in, right? We're going in, this kid's doing the worm. I'm quite good at it, uh, if, I, if I say so myself here. He's, the concentrations on his, on his face really tells you he's like hardcore into this. But again, shot with a7 III, 35 millimeter in this case. We, we go right in there. I'm at the bottom, you know, right where he's doing the dip. And 
the focus is awesome, the tracking is awesome, and we have really cool images that we're able to use now for the album and, and so on. And then, you know, we're back to that 7200 when Robo Dad gives you a stare right into the camera from across the hall. And, you know, I'm not really sure what he's thinking. I hope he's thinking I'm doing a good job, but he's kind of like eyeing me, like, you better be doing a good job, I guess. But <laughs> to be able to log on him from across the room in such a dark place and get this cool Robo Dad um, image, I think is, is pretty, pretty cool. So obviously, you know, you have to have the vision for it, but the equipment has to be there and carry the, the weight, right? They have to, it has to do the heavy lifting, as they say. So reception and party shots, big aperture lenses, right? We love shooting with a 44 to 35, 1.4s for all the dancing, for all the uh, extreme in the face uh, kind of scenarios. Um, 16 to 35 as a zoom is a great lens for dancing. Um, it's not a 1.4, so you know you need a brighter room um, or, or cranking up the ISO, which is totally fine. Um, don't be afraid to go below, you know, above 800 ISO. Um, so you know that's a great choice. Uh, and of course, 85 and 7200 again, those lenses. Um, is what we use for a lot of the receptions in the speeches, uh, especially. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea um, about how I utilize that, that system, um, the lenses that I often use um, to create some really cool images. And again, it, it seems like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of everything. And at the end of the day, I think, I think re it really is. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully um, you got a sense of kind of what I do as a professional, what lenses and what equipment I, I use. Um, I want to leave you with a um, little self-promotion, I guess. Uh, I run a workshop called the Fit of the Light Workshop. If you're um, struggling with um, understanding light and working with off-camera flash, for example, uh, we do utilize all the Sony system there as well. Uh, so if you're struggling with off-camera flash with your Sony, even if it's not a Sony system, I, uh, we can still help you out. So have a look at that. There's a website, um, the Freight of the Light Workshop. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I know this was a quick one. I was given about half an hour and I think we're at 30 minutes right now. So I'm gonna uh, be available for Q&A. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I'm happy to help. Thank you again to Vistec and Sony for the opportunity. Um, hope to see you guys on social. And um, let's connect there, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Rap? Pretty good. How are you? I'm enjoying your presentation. That was great. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so I wanted to tell everybody uh, that's watching right now, you can go to the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen if you have any questions that you want me to ask to wrap. But uh, kind of right off the bat, just uh, again, welcome to ProFusion 2021. And um, I know that for yourself, you, you were kind of going through during the presentation about prime lenses and zoom lenses and things like that. And of course, when it comes down to it, a lot of people are like, well, do I do carry, you know, multiple bags with all the gear and all the different situations? Um, if you had a situation or a wedding that you were shooting where you needed to very, you know, be very economical with what you bring, um, mm -hmm. do you have a preference? Do you just kind of lend towards the Zoom or do you lend yourself towards, lean towards the uh, the prime lenses? What What is your take on if you don't have uh, the uh, availability to bring everything? Well, I mean, I haven't been faced with that situation in a while because uh, I kind of do have the ability to do that. So so it's kind of hard to say. Um, and again, I think it goes back to kind of that that, this, that school of thought of like, well, you know, are we just going to go with, with Zooms? Or are we going to go with Primes? I think ultimately, I think you'll get a lot more range and a lot more versatility with Zoom lenses, obviously. Um, but of course, there's a trade-off, right? You're not going to get that 35 1.4 look out of a 24 to 70 at 35 and 2.8. It's just not going to look the same. So, so uh, you know, um, 
yeah, it's it's either it has to be one or the other, or ultimately you just get a roll bag and an assistant, and you you end up with both. And I think that's how I ended up at that stage where over the years, over 12 years of doing this, um, it was sort of trial and error. There were situations where I was at where I'm like, oh, you know, if I only had that 35 one four, this this shot would have been like perfect. But I have to settle now with that with a 35 focal length on a 24 to 70 at 2.8, and uh, it's okay, but it wasn't exactly where I want. So. It came from that, from those experiences that I eventually decided, yeah, let's 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 invest in a really nice kit, a bigger kit, and then just be prepared and be and have things available to me when I need them. So I'm not caught off guard. And I do know exactly the, the scenario you bring up. In, in many cases, when you get to the venue, you realize, oh, this is a smaller room or I just don't have the space. And if you're doing that setup as you were doing in the morning, for example, people doing their makeup, that might be in a bathroom where literally the, they're, they're in such a cramp and you're, you're shooting from the door where yes, you have to choose the, the widest aperture, the, even the widest lens, the focal length, just to be able to fit uh, and get a good image. Uh, so I, I totally understand that. Even in that case, um, for myself, I remember that with zoom lenses, you mentioned the, the Holy Trinity. Um, for yourself, you, you wrote in there the 12 to 24. Um, do you also shoot with the 16 to 35? Because of course that lens for us has been around for much longer than the 12 to 24. Yeah, so that's actually the lens I, I use. I think if someone was going to invest in a system now, the 12 to 24 would be probably the one I would recommend to kind of complete that trinity, as we call it. But uh, that the 16 to 35 is an amazing lens, and that's the one I currently use. And at 16, I I, I don't haven't had any situations yet where I was at 16 and I'm like, oh, I really wish I had that four, <laughs> that you know, to the 12 now. Um, so so haven't haven't found myself in that in that situation yet. But uh, but it, that is the lens I use, the 16 to 35, and it's it's a beautiful lens. It's uh, really really um, a lot of variety in terms of focal lengths, and they look so different at 16 than at 35. From to go from one end to the other is, is, is a completely different photograph. Yeah. And then the other thing is, again, recently you've got the uh, Alpha One and you started to shoot with that. Um, yeah. What are your experiences, even coming from an A7 III to suddenly be shooting with an Alpha One? Oh, it's 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 kind of night and day. I mean, in in a sense, uh, everything is uh, fresher. Everything is you know the, even some something as simple as as the menu, right? It's something maybe we don't uh, spend a lot of time uh, talking about, but but just uh, the layout of it, it's it's a, it's a fresh new look. Uh, of course, the quality of the images is uh, is is completely insane. Um, you know, it's, as you know, it's, it's a, a, a lot more megapixels as well. Um, so the, the resolution is is uh, is just great, and it's just such a snappy camera. It's it's uh, you know the one. If I had to pick one camera, uh, if someone just said you can only own one camera, that would be the camera. Uh, it, it's got ultimately everything that you you might uh, you might want. So yeah, so far so good. I haven't had you know I haven't had enough chance to to really really put it through its paces just yet, and I'm looking forward to doing that. But so far, so good. I, I enjoy it. Okay. We've got a, a question coming in. It says, how accommodating are clients when you push for a creative shot that they may not understand? How far can you push? Yeah, you, you push as far as you need. But I think, I think it, uh, that kind of um, goes back to um, creating trust and comfort with your clients, right? So uh, one thing that I, I really love doing, especially if it's a client that's unsure, um, of something is throughout the day, once I'm confident in a, in a shot that I think they're not expecting and I think it looks amazing and you have to make sure it looks really good, but you show them the back of the camera and say, so guys, the reason why I was posing you over here and, and going and hiding behind this bush was because of this shot. And you show them the back of the camera and they're like, oh, so this crazy man isn't crazy after all. He's just doing all this stuff to get a really cool shot. So think from that point on, you're going to create that comfort, that trust, and you can tell your clients to, to do backflips for you and they will. Uh, but it, it does start with, with creating trust. Um, hopefully your clients are hiring you for what you do and how you see the world. Um, and so there, there, there really shouldn't be too much uh, pushback in terms of you know, what you're trying to accomplish with them because they should be on board. Uh, and you're, if you're finding that consistently, uh, it might have something to do with uh, you know, just creating that comfort and trust ahead of time. So something that you might need to work on 
if that keeps happening. I hope that I hope that answers your question. I think so. And uh, I've had the pleasure of actually shooting uh, weddings with you. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I'm always, uh, you know, that, that you like going into a location and kind of even off the fly saying, you know, this is the focal length that I want to use for this scenario. So I would say, take us through something like that. When you approach a space, do you already have in your mind, this is a 35 millimeter scenario, or I'm going to use the zoom, or do you just kind of go with the flow uh, of the day? Yeah, a lot of time it, it is going with the flow. And, and as you know, we, we've talked about this in other, uh, you know, other times we, we've chatted about scouting locations and whatnot and just being spontaneous with it. Uh, and so I certainly like to do that. I like being, I like the spontaneity to kind of take over and guide me a little bit. Um, so I'm very much into, you know, walking into a space and, and, and letting the space give me ideas um, and, and the, the, the things around me, the light around me, uh, create those ideas kind of up here. And then, and then it kind of goes, there's, there's, there's kind of a, a step now where in my head, I, I think this is going to look this way. And now what do I need from the gear department to create that image that's currently in my head, right? And that's when I'll be like, okay, that looks like a 35 would be the, the perfect, uh, you know, focal length for this specific shot. Um, and then sometimes, you know, once I get that shot, um, then I can kind of play with that scene, right? Just because you take one shot doesn't mean you have to take one shot and move and move on. You can take one shot at the 35 like you wanted and then just switch over to a 50 or an 85 and do more close-ups and kind of continue using the space and the gifts of that location um, and, and kind of uh, move with it. But it, it's, it really is all spent spontaneity for me. And I think it's just, again, down to the experience and the years of, of kind of walking into spaces constantly and, and uh, failing, of course, uh, or especially earlier on, uh, but, um, but being comfortable um, with, with the unknown and, and just embracing it as it comes. Nice. And then one final question, um, you know, for most people that know that you're a pro photo ambassador, how is it using the Profoto system with the Sony cameras? Yeah, there's there's uh, there's really no no issues. They, they work together seamlessly. Profoto has remotes that are Sony specific, so uh, you have all the functions uh, that uh, you're not you're not going to miss out on any any features or anything like that. The companies together work together uh, quite cohesively uh, in making sure that you you're getting the best of both systems. Um, so it's, it's been awesome. It's been uh, really no headaches. Uh, it just, it works as it should. And, uh, I hope it continues to, to go that way. So one of the things that you actually showed me, uh, was that shot result preview. Uh, yeah. Where you set it up as your custom three button on your camera so that you can actually, um, check out your ambient light very quickly. Uh, one of the features on the alpha one uh, that's amazing is, and also on the new A7 IV, is that now you can actually program the display to be ambient only anyways. So to check that off, uh, you know, to, to use a system like Profoto or, you know, external flashes in general, you're able to see your ambient light, you know, do the exposure that you're looking for and then initiate the flash. So that was yeah. really cool that you, that you found and, and you, you taught me of that. Yeah, totally. That that was such a um, you know that was the one the one difference I guess going from uh, you know the DSLR system to to the Sony system uh, for me personally was that it, it would display the you know a, a brightened exposure once you put your your remote on and um, I know we don't want to get into the details of how to set it up currently but I do have a video on my YouTube channel if you guys uh, um, are uh, wanting to see what that's all about and it's called the shot result preview and uh, yeah it's kind of cool that the, the alpha one and the the a7 IV now have the ability to turn that off because it was just an extra step for me I had to kind of program a button to, to see it I mean I've, I've been used to just seeing my ambient and just letting flash come in later. So that, that, that's going to be a welcome change for sure. Excellent. Well, Raf, thank you very much for uh, joining us okay. here at uh, Profusion 2021 and uh, continued success. And uh, for everyone else, thank you for joining this presentation and we'll go on to the next one. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time. See you. Bye.